Today, we're going to talk about some advanced glassware. Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I'm your host, Derek Schomer. Let's talk about some glassware that can amp up your game when you're making cocktails. We've already done a simple version, kind of like the basic glassware you would need, but then you want to move to something different. You want to get a little bit more fancy without necessarily always breaking the bank. How do you do it? So let's start first by figuring out, is the martini glass the best vessel for your cocktail? The biggest issue with the martini glass is it sways. And when it sways, it's because it's, I mean, it's, it's flared out. And sometimes they can get pretty flared out on the edges. And your liquid sloshes around. And if you're walking around, it can end up sloshing out on your floor, on your shoes. And since it's pretty much a spirit forward drink, you're losing a lot of the spirit when you decide to dump it out all over the floor, especially if you already had to. So what is the solution to it? Going back to about 30s, 1930s or so, this is a Nick and Nora glass made famous by Nick and Nora from the Thin Man uh, movie series. They're big drinkers and they always use these. This looks very similar to uh, a white wine glass, except it's a little bit bigger. One of the benefits is you don't always have to go right to the rim on it. This is a six ounce glass, so you're still going to be able to get four to five ounces in here without getting all crazy. This one at about five ounces, you're going to start spilling it. So when you're walking around with this, there's a, a little bit more give because the walls are up higher and it continues to keep that fancy look with a little bit of the curve. So you can still put your cherries down at the bottom. You can still make your, your uh, rainbow colors out of your different types of martinis and get away with it with a Nick and Nora. If you're really into that style of glass, you could try the fishbowl martini. I don't necessarily know if that's an official name. That's what I call it because uh, it's got like a little fishbowl. You throw your water and your ice in there. You throw your martini glass on top and you're good to go. Chilling it is easy. You could chill it ahead of time, but then by leaving it sitting in that bath of cold water, if you're a slower drinker like myself, you can sip on that martini longer and it stays chilled before it goes down to room temperature. The one I prefer probably the most is the coupe glass or the coupette glass. These types of glasses are often seen as, uh, relations, uh, as a relationship to champagne. Uh, it was a, kind of more of the traditional champagne glass, looks like this. Uh, but, and you can see them sometimes, they stack them at weddings and do all kinds of crazy stuff and they'll put their champagne in here. One of the complaints to this glass from a champagne perspective is because the surface area is so wide, a lot of the bubbles leak out. So that's why they kind of move to the flute glass. This little coupe glass has become very popular for cocktails. Now, originally they say the legend is that it's uh, Marie Antoinette's uh, breast was used as the mold, or at least the theory behind it. Don't know if that's necessarily true. This is a three ounce glass. This works great for hardcore uh, cocktails that are very spirit forward, that have very few ingredients to them, no ice, and very little to no juices. This one you can get a little bit more crazy with. You can, you know, create even a screw a screwdriver or anything. One of the benefits to this coupe is because the rims kind of go around, if you're doing any type of spinning or if you're rinsing your glass with absinthe or vermouth and you want to get a good rinse, it's not going to splash everywhere while you're going like this and then you're dumping it. So there's a little bit more control if you're doing any type of smoked cocktails and you want the smoke to stay inside. It's, it just makes things a little bit more fancy. Just a little bit on wine glasses, if you're creating any type of wine-based cocktails, you'll find a lot of white wine-based cocktails going to white wine glass. Red wine-based cocktails are going to a red wine glass. The big difference is because red wines typically are bolder, they have a little bit more of a, a curve to them and you'll end up having very little sometimes in the, in the glass itself, but it's really there to keep that flavor in there and let it kind of mellow. Quickly, that's a margarita glass. Nobody knows why, but that's what they look like. Hurricane glass. Lots of blended drinks in here. The Hurricane from Pat O'Brien's is in a bigger glass like this. The Hurricane glass, um, crushed ice, blended drinks, big, big uh, dilution factors to them. P probably higher proofage, but more watered down. Fits in a glass that's larger, so the Hurricane works best for that. Blue Hawaii, stuff like that. And the Hurricane glass is named after the Hurricane Lantern, which has a similarity in look. Tiki mug, so that's a glass tiki mug, the best seller at my online store at awesomedrinks.com if you want to buy some glassware from me. Uh, this is definitely a looker. Lots of people ask about them. A lot of people ordering them. They get them at restaurants and they go looking for places to buy them. That's kind of like the, the, the only real glass version of the tiki mug that you find. Uh, most of them are going to be ceramic or some sort of material in that direction. The last three are your tasting glasses. This is typically for grappa. It's a, also known as a grappa glass around the world. Um, it's got a bulbous bottom and a little flute at the top. This helps keep some of the abrasive alcohol aroma from escaping in your nose when you're trying to appreciate a, a grappa. I don't really appreciate grappa, so it's not my thing. The brandy glass or the snifter glass, the brandy snifter. 
usually for brandy, but it can be for anything. If you want to be able to appreciate a whiskey, um, anything, it gives you a chance to warm it up with your hand to get it down to the body temperature or up, depending, and allow some of those aromas to come out, and it feeds them right towards your nose. One of the things that this presents that this doesn't as much as some of the alcohol. So if you're drinking something that's very young, that has a very vibrant alcohol, some Blanco tequilas, for instance, that have um, very, there's some great flavors and aromas in there, but there's kind of gets masked a little bit by the alcohol. At Glen Carn, for some reason, I think just the, the way it's designed allows that alcohol to kind of get stuck and trapped in there where some of the other aroma comes out. So either way, for a tasting perspective, my personal opinion is that the Glen Carn is the way to go. They tend to be a little bit more expensive. They're made of crystal. These tend to be mass produced in most cases, but you can get really fancy ones. You can always up your game and buy a, a higher level of glass as well. But that, my friends, is your advanced glassware. From your hurricanes to your tastings and everything in between, wine cocktails, you name it, there is a glass for it. And if not, you don't need the glass. So, if you have any questions, write them below, share, subscribe, like, tell your friends. We're teaching you how to drink. First, you have this low ball, which is also known as an old-fashioned glass, which is also known as a rocks glass. So typically, there's a few rocks of ice in there, but that really comes down to the, the drink specifically. If it was a Sazerac that doesn't call for ice, it's still going to...